Hey everybody, today I'm taking a look at World Wonders, which is a 1-5 to five player board game designed by Zay Mendez and published by Arcane Wonders. This one takes 70 minutes according uh, to the box and it is a tile placement polyomino style game. Now before I get started on my review of World Wonders, I want to give a shout out to the show sponsor keyender.co.uk who are my go-to online retailer and if you use the link in the show notes or the QR code then you can get five percent off your first order. Okay so World Wonders is going to look like this when it is set up where each player is going to have their own little map um, that looks like this. This is where you're going to be populating and um, with all the buildings that you'll acquire throughout the game. And um, these are double-sided so you can play with an identical side or an asymmetrical side where your river is slightly different. Uh, below that you have Another player board which tracks all your statistics basically and um, you have a bunch of different information here such as the currency where each round you're going to have seven coins to spend and you can increase that to nine should you take out one of these loans as a bonus action. You have your population marker, which is an end game trigger really, where if you get it right to the end, that will of course trigger the end of the round and potentially get you some more points should you make it that far. And um, also you have these three kind of resource uh, icons where again, you're trying to push them as far as you can. And when you reach these little head symbols, you'll push up your um, population marker and at the end of the game, um, this is going to be one of these scoring mechanisms, mechanisms where your lowest of the three will be additional points. So you can see here that I had seven points um, on my reach track, which is the lowest of the three. Therefore, it would be uh, seven points for me at the end. Now, additional things we have here are these variable end game objectives. Now, this is a, an optional module. Um, I would suggest you play with it because it doesn't add much more complexity, but it gives you more decisions to, um, to make. And you also have the um, the board here that holds all the tiles that you'll be drafting from. Now this also shows the player order. So I have a two player game um, here. It shows the cost of all the tiles um, and only the ones below it are available. So each round there's gonna be one of each type up for taking and they do not get replenished. So um, you've got to take it or risk losing it. You have the roads here and you also have these little towers which can come in very useful, um, which I'll explain later. And uh, more importantly, you have the wonders themselves. So at any time in the game, you'll have three wonders up for the taking. Each one has an associated card as well as a rather nice um, kind of wooden component to represent uh, the wonders. So you have a ton here, and the three available right now are the Hippodrome, the Aqueduct, and the Obelisks. And on these cards, it shows um, not only what you'll gain by building that wonder, so this will just get me a point, where the Aqueduct would get me a point and let me go one up the wheat track, but it'll also give me the restrictions which I need to abide by in order to place that on the board. So this one, the Hippodrome, shows that I need to have eight um, green squares or you know a grid of eight on my player board available um, and I also need to be touching a road and touching an F building so you can see here that the buildings are lettered and right here we have an F building we've got M buildings and we've got B buildings um, but let's talk about how the game actually works so on each player's turn you will have the option to buy something from the display by spending an amount of currency. Um, so let's just say for an example, um, on my first turn, I really wanted this building here. So I'd spend four coins because you can see here that this one costs four. If I'd move my board up four spaces to show how much money I have left, I would take that tile and I'd place it on my player board. Now the first time you place a tile, you can actually place it in company with a road because you get given a bonus road. And let's just say I wanted to do something like this. Now, there are some restrictions on where you can place these things because every building needs to be touching a road. And the bottom edge of your road, this sidewalk here, does actually count um, as a road, or the, the bottom edge of the board, I should say. Um, but there is a one way around that, and that is by touching um, the same building types together. So for example, if later I wanted to purchase this one, I could actually place it like this because they are both F buildings, even though this building is not touching a road. So that is one of the ways you can get around not placing uh, next to a road. And when you place a building, you are going to have a look what's on it. So this one would let me move three up um, the wheat track, which would in turn get me one up the population track. And if you remember, I want to try to keep these as balanced as possible to get me some end game scoring. Now let's talk about some other ways that we'll score points. 
So you will actually score a point for every building that is completely surrounded um, on every edge. Um, and that could be by roads, it could be by the water, it could be by the edge of the board, or it can be by these natural resources. Um, and every one of these that you are touching at the end of the game um, will be worth an additional victory point. But if you overlap it, then um, that victory point will be sacrificed um, essentially. So let's take a look at some other things you can buy. So you can buy new roads um, and they cost one coin each and you can see here from the board and um, you can either buy the big long road which can also be doubled up as a bridge to pass um, the water. You can have these little segments of road which are very useful to kind of fill in little gaps and stuff. Um, you can take these towers which cost you two coins and these are useful to get you out of kind of sticky situations where if you kind of run out of room to place new roads, you can place a tower down and then you can build roads from the towers. So they are again very handy, um, especially later in the game as your board gets more populated. Um, of course, you have the different building sizes which come in different costs. So you know, the little ones only cost you two, whereas the, the massive ones will cost you up to five coins. And depending on the player count, there might even be some more buildings up for play um, just to balance things out. Um, some additional actions are to take the first player for the next round where you'll pay a coin and put your little kind of icon or your little piece on top of it to show that you'll be first player next turn. And the same goes for second place um, next turn as well. So turn order in this game is generally um, quite important. And another action, and this is a free bonus action, is to take a loan where if you remember, that will increase your... Um, your capacity to buy things up to nine rather than the standard seven. Um, but later in the game, you do need to pay that back at three. So it's gonna cost you an additional coin. And if you don't pay it back by the end of the game, you will lose two points. And the final action, of course, is to claim one of these world wonders. And the cost of these is going to correlate to how much money you have left. So um, if I wanted to claim a wonder now, of course I need to have, or to be able to build it, um, but this would actually cost me all the rest of my currency. You know, even if I take it my first action, it's gonna cost all the currency, or if I, I only had one coin left, it's gonna cost me the remainder of my currency. So sometimes you can get a bargain, but sometimes if you really want something, it's going to be quite costly. But let's just say I wanted to build um, this aqueduct, I would claim it, um, and then I would place it to my kind of scoring tableau, bearing in mind this is gonna be gonna gain me a point at the end of the game, and let me go up that weak track another space. And then I need to place it on my map here. So again, just to go over what these um, these symbols mean, this will show that um, I need to have, of course, five squares in a row, because this is five squares long. I need to start on land, I need to finish on land, and I need to go over at least three other spaces that can be water or land. But I need to be next to water, I need to be next to a road, and I need to be next to an F building. So who would have thought it? This can slot, um, slot in really nicely here. Like so, again, because I'm next to an F building, I'm next to water, I'm next to a road, and of course it fits on quite nicely there. So this is this objective completed, and that's a scoring or a point at the end of the game for me. Now, unlike all the other buildings in the game, the wonders will instantly uh, replenish, ready to be claimed by the other players. So in this example, the theater would come into play, which requires three um, adjacent squares in a little L shape like this. It needs to be next to a natural um, resource on my player board, and next to an H building. And that's essentially how the game works. You're gonna keep on playing each round until everybody has run out of money. And then you will redetermine the player order for the next round, which is based on kind of the lowest population will go first unless somebody has claimed one of these first or second player um, markers. You'll play until either all of the buildings have been depleted, which is 10 rounds, or until somebody meets um, the top level of their um, population track. And then at the end of the game, you'll score points based on the population track. Again, if you reach that final three slots, your lowest of the three uh, resources, every complete, completed um, or completely surrounded building, every wonder you've done, and of course, these public objectives as well as the um, on-show natural resources that you have built next to. Um, let's have a look at some of these objectives. So you have the green valley here, which is the first or the player who's got the largest square or section of um, green squares, kind of trapped between other um, constructs, will get three points. Next or second place will get one point. Um, kind of every building touching the edge of the board. Um, you've got who's got the most wonders. Um, and there are tons of these, such as the, you know, the longest road, um, you know, who's got the highest up the um, kind of um, agriculture track. 
who's got the most F buildings, um, etc. Okay, so let's share some thoughts on World Wonders. And I thought I'd build up my map um, a little bit more uh, just to show you how the game can look um, towards the end of the game or as you progress, because it does build up and look quite um, quite impressive once you have this mix of the tiles and the wonders on the board. It definitely has a good table presence at uh, this game, which I think is gonna be one of the kind of USPs of it and make make people drawn to this one um, because there are so many other polyomino games on the market right now. So, you know, I wanted to give this one a go because it has received some positive buzz. You know, there's a lot of um, famous reviewers who have um, spoken highly of this one. And I can see why, you know, it's a well put together game. Um, and I actually think this game did a good job of not reaching too far to steer away from the kind of polyomino nature of the game. Because that's what this game is. Simple polyominoes, and they didn't kind of bite off more than they could chew. It didn't. It didn't try to be anything that it's not, because the actual scoring mechanisms in this game are fairly straightforward. Just surround buildings, and um, you've got that little Knizia mechanism where you want to balance your resources out. And um, of course, you've got that competition with the um, objectives. But the thing, or the the thing that really I took away from this game more than anything else, is the player angst, because this game is probably one of the strongest examples of just completely, um, you know, suffering when it's not your turn because you are worried about tiles being taken, and again because these ones do not get um, refreshed. You're worried about rows being taken, you're worried about the towers being taken, and of course you are worried about the wonders being taken, and. This mechanism, although it's very, it's kind of a minor mechanism really, it's nothing uh, extravagant, just the idea of when you buy these wonders, um, you will spend the remainder of your money on them. And that creates quite a tense situation because you want to be having productive turns, of course, you don't want to be spending your whole turn claiming um, a wonder, that's going to cost you, you know, a massive seven um, money just for a point essentially, or maybe a point and go up a track. But um, as you start to buy more um, tokens, more tiles to put onto your player board, you might spot that somebody else can place that wonder as well that you've had your eye on, meaning that you're willing to sacrifice more money than you probably should do in order to take them because that's what you've been building um, towards. So I do love that tension of, you know, I need to get that now before it's gone and, you know, inevitably that will happen. You know, you do have to be really on the ball here and kind of strike when the iron is hot or push your luck to get more done and maybe even be a little bit greedy. So sometimes that can pay off, sometimes it won't pay off, but that is kind of the ongoing thread that I experienced throughout this game. I do enjoy how you have to juggle quite a few things, but not too much because the scoring is, again, relatively straightforward. But you do have that kind of spinning plates thing going on where you want to be building towards these wonders. But as you build towards those wonders, you might cr be creating little fiddly gaps in your player board, which isn't ideal because that means those buildings aren't going to score you points. And you're going to have to invest later to fill in those gaps. But even sometimes there can be wonders that even kind of squeeze in those gaps, um, like these little um, kind of Easter Island tokens and which need to be ha have spaces apart. So I do like how, yeah, you are juggling many things um, at once and there's always something to do here. You know, even if there's not a wonder that um, that you can claim anytime soon, um, there's still, you know, you can focus on climbing the tracks that you need to and you can focus in, on filling those gaps or, of course, pushing to um, be the leader in these different objectives. And I did mention earlier that these objectives are a um, an optional thing to play with the game, um, but I would say just use them straight away. They're all very straightforward and add a bit more competition and player interaction into the game. And because of that constant thread of interaction with the other players, all albeit passive, um, it does feel like quite an engaging game. I never find myself bored with this one. And it certainly um, helps the fact that it is quite impressive to look at once you get going. So you do take a good sense of ownership in your player board. And um, you know, it's definitely satisfying when you pull things off and make it look cool. You know, even if you're not winning the game, you can at least look at your board and think, you know what, that's cool. Um, all the different monuments look great um, on the table. I think the... The game really peaks at two or three players, particularly three, I think, because it adds a bit more competition with the Wonders, where as a two-player game, you might just glance over at your opponent and say, you know, they're nowhere near building that Wonder. I could take my foot off the pedal, really, um, and or, or take my foot off the uh, accelerator and focus on that later, where in a three-player game, that's a bit more difficult to do, and you'll be looking over your shoulder a bit more. Uh, when you start getting into that four-player mark, and especially a five-player mark, I think the game does outstay its welcome. I think it's a bit too long for that. 
I have played between two and four players. I wouldn't even consider playing with five players. Um, and I thought the four players did st did take too long, if I'm honest. Um, whereas two or three players were pretty much um, the sweet spot for me, where you don't really have that. It doesn't drag its heels too much, and you feel like you get quite a lot of game done in a relatively short time, you know, talking around 70 minutes. And following on from that, the uptime, or downtime, if you want to phrase it that way, isn't the best at times, um, because... As I said, sometimes you will be almost backed into a corner to almost sacrifice your whole turn to claim uh, a wonder, which means you can be out of the running for quite a long time before you get another go because all the other players will be spending their currency buying new tiles and stuff and while you're doing nothing. So bear in mind that that can happen, hence why I prefer playing at these smaller player counts. And as I'm sure you can determine for yourself, this game um, looks fantastic on the table. The production is generally excellent. I mean, all the wonders just look fantastic and they look very distinct from one another. You know, it's very cool when you get to build these huge pyramids on your player board that just tower over everything. You know, you've got like ziggurats, you've got, uh, you know, the Great Wall of China, you've got the Easter Island statues, you've got Machu Picchu, um, all these cool things, you know, even like the Pantheon and stuff and the Trojan horses. So a good variety of kind of historical world wonders here, which do really pop on the table. And that kind of um, mixture between the cardboard tiles and those 3G structures, it just looks great and it looks very unique and distinct um, from anything else out there. Okay, so let's share some final thoughts on world wonders and there's no disputing this is a very solid in fact very good um tile placement polyomino style game but that being said i don't think it's anything revolutionary at all i think a big portion of the buzz of this one is because of the table presence and the novelty factor of these nice wooden world wonders that look fantastic on the table you know full props to that they found a niche here and they've made it look distinct and unlike anything else but mechanisms wise there isn't really anything that special about it i suppose the only thing that really did catch my attention is the you know, spending how much money you've got left to grab the wonders available. That is cool, a very simple mechanism, but it works well for this game. Um, and it adds the already high um, turn angst of people grabbing the tiles that you wanted and feeling that constant frustration and excitement of grabbing the tile that you want, or of course, thinking of a plan B once the tile that you wanted has been snapped up. And that, I like the fact that there's never really a bad option here. You know, even if um, you know the greatest tile has been taken, even grabbing a road before somebody else can be important in this game, which I really do like. So it does feel like you're always moving towards something. Now, I appreciate this game is trying to appeal to a mass audience. We know why wouldn't it? But I do feel like it could have done with a mechanism or two more just to take it over the edge and make it feel even more special because... You kind of don't get huge swings of points here or huge chunks of points. It's just a point here or there. You know, you get a point for every building you surround. And that can mount up, of course. Uh, a point for every, you know, natural resource you're touching. And, of course, this kind of Knizian mechanism of your lowest um, resource. But uh, although I love the Wonders and, you know, building the Wonders is the funnest part of the game... I feel like these could have been swingier. It feels like, you know, you put a lot of effort in at times to build the perfect, um, you know, habitat and environment to get these down. And then you get a point for them at the end of the game. It would have been cool if they were a bit, a bit more powerful and they let you do more things. But maybe I'm looking at a game or looking at this game to be something that it's simply not. Um, <laughs> so yeah, all in all, I think this game is, is really fun. It's a very good game. Again, I do think it um, peaks at that two or three players, especially um, at three players. And I'm sure that um, had another game this year not come out, then this would be going straight into my collection as my kind of main polyomino style game. Um, however, another polyomino game did, did come out this year called Wild Tiled West, which I think narrowly has the edge over this one because I think it's a bit more fun and a bit more novel and a bit more, to be honest, a bit more going on. Um, than World Wonders. So um, yeah, I think this one's just um, a victim of bad timing for me, where I don't really want two larger, you know, 70 minute polyomino games in my collection. And I think Wild Tiled West um, is just about um, takes the, the medal over this one. So I can definitely recommend this one to fans of polyomino games. You know, Zay Mendez is definitely a designer I've had my eye on. Um, I'm really looking forward to what else he brings out because, you know, he came out with Brazil um, a couple of years ago, which I thought was another very good game. And it's cool to see how different the styles of games um, that he is, um, you know, making. So that's really cool. So um, World Wonders, again, any other day of the week, I would say get this one. Um, but I would, I would actually recommend 
wild tiled west above this one if you want kind of a newer fresh lick of paint on a polyomino style game despite this one looking um, so awesome when it's on the table.